G'day, how are you doing on this fine day? Welcome to another Q&A. I can rhyme. In today's video, I am answering YouTube comments. So let's jump right on it. From JC Rebel 18 what made you decide to put spots on your new suit's muzzle? I haven't actually really thought about this too much because it was just such a natural progression in his design. People started drawing them in fan arts, and then I started drawing them in my own art, and then they made their way onto ref sheets, and thus onto the fursuit. I think it's mainly because it's like a cute way to show whiskers without like actually having them. More for less, Bakari did have whiskers, but over time the upkeep just got like a bit too annoying because I keep falling out and kids will keep grabbing them and I have to keep replacing them. So I just stopped replacing them. Maybe the whiskers will come back one day, who knows, but for now we have Spotty Duddies. From Fifi and Jake. If you wanted to make a full fursuit, would it be okay to like glue fur onto stuff like your shirt, pants, etc? I mean, technically you could, but I don't think it would last very long because like glue doesn't like surfaces that move and surfaces that are moist. And uh, a fursuit is both of those. But the other problem you'll face is with clothing on the inside, you are going to be so warm beyond reason. <laughs> Because having that extra layer, you won't be able to ventilate air as well as you would if it was just fur and under armor. So for the best result with this idea, I think you'll definitely need to do some sewing. Just be prepared to be unnecessarily hot. From Peach the Dog, can you make an updated version of the video all my personas and characters? Thanks, love your vids. I think I've had a surprising amount of requests for this and I really don't know why. There isn't really too much that has changed. I might make one on like the one year anniversary of the old one, but for now, here's all the changes. I don't own Format anymore, he has been sold. I don't have my Adezo fursuit anymore, it's been sold and renamed to Stormy's partner Treble, so I still own the character, just not the suit. And I have two new characters to add to the lineup. A Furby named Bink, and a plush Cabot named Knapsack. From Zoe Benoe. Hey Pikari, I want to have an OC that kind of stands out. What kinds of details should I add to my character? Well, I have just what you need. <laughs> Nothing stands out quite like Sparkle Dogs do, so just add every saturated color that you can think of and you are good to go. From the Calamander. Hey, I have a question. My persona looked a lot like a mannequin when she's actually a hybrid between a shark, dog, wolf, and lynx. I'm worried about people attacking me for not following the design of a mannequin properly if they don't know that she's a hybrid. What's your opinion on this? Nah, you'll be fine as long as you have your species clearly labeled somewhere, like just on your reference sheet or just your profile. I find the mannequin community is pretty chill, so I don't think you have anything to really worry about. If it does get bad enough, you may have to make the species a little bit bigger, because I know some people have to do that because everyone thinks they're a duchy, so on their profile it's like, NOT A duchy. So yeah, you'll be fine, like worst case, just block them and move on. From Axel Wolf, what is your most traumatic first experience, either damages or interactions? Now I have told the story of my most traumatic experience in Super 4, but Thanks to Lars Ferdu, I now have a traumatic experience with someone else in fursuit. <laughs> it was my first night of the con, and it was getting pretty late, so me and my friendos had just headed back to our room to chill and fall asleep. And I was just out on the balcony, admiring the view, when suddenly a fursuiter pops up on the balcony next to us, and it was a fursuit that I'd never seen before from a maker I didn't recognize, so I was so excited. I asked how their night was going, and who made their suit, turns out it was them, so that was also pretty exciting. And we just had a nice chat for a few minutes. So after a little bit, I headed back inside and sat down. Then a few minutes later, I looked up from my phone to see the balcony door opening and then that suitor walking inside. There's no other way to get into our room other than the front door. This dude actually just climbed over from his balcony to our balcony on the 13th floor up. He wasn't wearing his head anymore, but we can still see the rest of the suit now. And, uh, this is a PG rated YouTube channel. I cannot go into any more details. So now we're all in absolute shock, trying to process what actually just happened or was still happening. Was it still happening? I wasn't sure. It could have been happening, but it could have also been a terrible nightmare. I'm glad I had my friends with me as witnesses. So after some, agonizingly long, stunned, awkward silence. We sort of just pepped up like, hey, uh, you weren't invited to come in here. You wanna get back to your room through our door? You wanna come this way and leave? And he's like, nah, it's all right. And he turns around, goes back out to the balcony and climbs back over to his. He climbed 
from balcony to balcony in a bodysuit on the 13th floor up twice. Needless to say, we locked the balcony door from then on. <laughs> yes, we let the photo team know about the incident and appropriate action has been taken, so don't worry there. But like, uh, yeah, that happened. It was sort of like the best case of the worst scenario, but uh, don't go climbing over balconies, you crazy critters. From Moonflake. Hi, Pakari Roo. I have a question. What's it like being a furry IRL? Do your neighbors think you're weird? Do you act like a furry doing anything? Is your house decorated like a furry? Do people even know you're a furry? Just curious. We do tend to cause a bit of a stir wherever we go, being such open furries and needing to go like, do and film stuff, but so far the reception's been nothing but positive. Or they've just gone by, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. A lady we used to live next to called us the foxes because for one of my birthdays we went and stormed the local park with our fursuits. And of course I always get the stares whenever I need to go film something out front. Like these scenes that I did for my fursuit packing video. That was done in our front driveway, so uh, I had the neighbor staring at me for a while there. But I really don't care. I'm just there doing my thing. I also used my suit once to help get attention for a garage sale we were doing, and that was wildly successful. As for our house, it definitely appears more nerdy than furry. Games, collectibles, plush, posters, all over the place. You wouldn't really know that we were furry until you come into the recording room and just see my fursuits everywhere. So I don't really think the locals ever know we're furries because they usually have never even heard of furries. They just think we're people with some weird hobbies. From CM Tiger, how would you find the fandom and how has it possibly helped you? I told my origin story a couple of times, but long story short, I found this video of Monster doing a dance. So then I researched fursuits and then I found my local furries and went to go meet them and then the rest is history. But how much it has helped me is absolutely ridiculous. The furry fandom is single-handedly responsible for me finding my sexuality, finding my soon-to-be wife, finding my career, traveling all over the country, traveling all over the globe. It is a key part in who I am as a person, and it has quite literally set up my life for me. I would really hate to think where I would be had I not found the fandom because I had no drive for anything. No headings, no passions, no big career dreams, just nothing. Just living each day as it came. The fandom was the catalyst for making me into who I am today, so I am forever, forever eternally grateful. From Desiree Myers. Hi Pakari, I was wondering if there is a fursuiting business that makes retractable claws like how real life cats do. Do you think things like this is weird because I think it would be a great addition to my fursuit, but some people said it would be just a pain to deal with. Hi from the small state of Delaware. Ah, hello Delaware. I don't know any makers that specifically offer them, but luckily for you, Matrices actually has a tutorial and pattern available to buy. So you could just ask your potential fursuit maker if they could use this to make them for you. From Disney Dasher. Hi Pakari. I'm a young fur, still a little new to the fandom. I'm having a hard time coming up with a fursona and was wondering where I can buy an adoptable. I've checked Etsy, but with little results. I'm looking for budget-friendly adoptables, so keep that in mind. Also, I love your videos. Ah, thank you! My go-to for adoptables is going to Fur Affinity, searching adopt, but then sorting the results by most recent. There isn't really a way to search in particular price ranges, but the rule of thumb is the simpler the base, the cheaper the price. And that is it for another Q&A video. As always, you can leave me some more questions in the comments below with the hashtag Q&A, or you can email me, karu at outlook.com. A patron shout out to Alex Wacker. Thank you so much, Alex, for your amazing support for my channel and helping to bring this video to these guys. But of course, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.